Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Labs. In the previous video, we talked about the lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. Today, we'll talk about LDH1 over LDH2 ratio, one of the most important ratios in medicine. And I'll tell you when the ratio is going to flip. What the flip? That's probably a myocardial infarction. Now let's get started. If you want the full discussion about LDH, check out my video titled Lactate Dehydrogenase. You'll find it in my labs playlist. Whether you eat carbohydrate, proteins, or fat, the end result is acetyl-CoA, which goes into the Krebs cycle in the mitochondria to give you energy called ATP. From glucose to pyruvate is called glycolysis. If you have enough oxygen, pyruvate will become acetyl-CoA a goes to give you tons of energy which is awesome but what if i do not have enough oxygen hashtag anaerobic glycolysis pyruvate will become lactate or lactic acid so if you have oxygen aerobic awesome i'll give you tons of energy carbon dioxide and water but if you do not have oxygen anaerobic i'll give you lactate or lactic acid and little atp what is the name of the beautiful enzyme that converts pyruvate to lactate or lactate to pyruvate? This is the story of the lactate dehydrogenase enzyme. Where can I find it? In almost every cell in your body. Because at some point your cell might run out of oxygen and we need some backup plans. That was the story of biochemistry. But clinically speaking, why do I care that my LDH level and my blood is high? Here is the story, morning glory. Here is your cell. If this cell dies or ruptures, it's gonna release whatever was inside, including the lactate dehydrogenase. So if you see elevated lactate dehydrogenase in my blood, it means that my cells are dying. What's the name of the condition when the cells in my heart are dying? Myocardial infarction. How about the brain? Stroke. My lungs? Pulmonary infarction. My liver? Liver failure. This is part of a series on my YouTube channel called Lab. As a clinician, why should you care about elevated LDH? Because LDH is found in your heart, red blood cells, reticuloendothelial organs, lungs, kidney, pancreas, placenta, liver, and skeletal muscles. So when LDH is high, one of these doofuses is dying. But hey, medicosis, this is not helpful. Imagine my patient having elevated LDH, and then I'm confronting the patient. Hey, my dear patient, uh, your LDH is high. This could be a myocardial infarction. It could be hemolysis. It could be liver problem, spleen problem, lymph node tumor like lymphoma. It could be a pulmonary disease or pulmonary infarction. It could be kidney failure, kidney infarction, or kidney disease. Maybe it's pancreatitis. Maybe it's an eclampsia. Maybe it's preeclampsia. Maybe your liver is toast and maybe you are just exercising too hard. This is not helpful. I hear you, my friend, and that's why we need LDH isomers. Not all LDH enzymes are created equal. There are subtypes of the LDH. Example, the heart has LDH1 and LDH2. Red blood cells, 1. How about the reticular endothelial organs? LDH2. Okay, medicosis, normally, in normal persons, what is the most abundant LDH in the serum? And the answer is, it's LDH2. LDH1, heart, red blood cells, LDH2, heart, lungs, and reticular endothelial organs, LDH3, lungs, LDH4, kidney, pancreas, and placenta, LDH5, liver, and skeletal muscles. Okay, medicosis, what's the clinical significance of LDH? All right. Heart has LDH1 and LDH2. If both are elevated, especially one, like one has to be higher than two, most of the time, not all the time, this is myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction and LDH. Okay, medicosis, my patient has elevated LDH1, which comes from the heart. Does it mean it's MI? Yes, it's po very possible that this is MI. But please remember, this could be hemolysis as well. So LDH1 is specific. But the best thing about LDH1 is that it's very sensitive. A normal LDH1 almost excludes the diagnosis of myocardial infarction. It's more than 95% sensitive. And as you know, if the test is highly sensitive, it rules out the disease. There is another cool thing about LDH. It returns back to normal after about 5 to 10 days. So this can help you diagnose a delayed case of myocardial infarction. Example, hey doc, I had severe central chest pain that radiated to my left arm and my left jaw and my left shoulder. It was like an elephant was sitting on my chest. The pain got worse with exertion and was relieved by rest. 
I was sweating like a pig, and I had the sense of impending doom. Hey patient, when did this happen? Do you have the chest pain today? No, not today. It happened four days ago. Do you think I still have the myocardial infarction? Well, that's a good question. One of the ways to help solve this puzzle is your LDH, because it returns back to normal level after five to ten days. Hey medicosis, but how about the CKMB? Oh, shut up. CKMB returns back to normal after about two to three days. This is four days. In other words, if CKMB is high, it means that the patient is having a myocardial infarction right now or at the very most two days ago, but not four. But medicosis, I do not need the LDH. I will go with the troponin I because troponin I returns back to normal after 10 to 14 days. Well, that's right. But don't forget that troponins can be elevated in chronic renal failure, heart failure, myopericarditis, pulmonary embolism, cardiac trauma, and sepsis. That's why LDH is also helpful. The more clues you have about the patient's case, the merrier. Now this ratio is one of the most important ratios in medicine, LDH1 to LDH2 ratio. What is normal? Normally your LDH2 of course should be higher than LDH1. About 35% of your total LDH is made of LDH2. So normally LDH2 is greater than LDH1. If you do the LDH1 to LDH2 ratio, of course it's gonna be less than one. But what if I have myocardial infarction? Remember, the heart has LDH1 and 2. But in myocardial infarction, LDH1 will elevate and exceed the level of LDH2. So you will have LDH1 to LDH2 ratio greater than one. So normally two should be greater than one. But if I have myocardial infarction, one is greater than two. In other words, the LDH has flipped. Hmm, this is flipping interesting. Now let me tell you more about the flip. Okay, in Photoshop, flip is not the same as rotate. This is rotate. You rotate it by 90 degrees, 180 degrees, and if you rotate 360, you come back here. But flip is different. You flip horizontally or flip vertically. So this is a flipped kidney, but this is a rotated kidney. Okay, medicosis, we know this and you're not funny. Why are you talking so much? Because on your exam day, you will not remember anything, just my stupid jokes. They will give you the LDH1 and LDH2 and you will not know what the flip to do and then you will remember the flip. Other flips in medicine, situs inversus. Oh, this is when your visceral organs are inverted. In this case, your liver will be on the left side and your spleen will be on the right side. Also, your heart's apex might be on the right side. But hey, medicosis, like, uh, is my liver supposed to be on the right? Shut up. Another ratio that can flip. Remember the lethicin to sphingomyelin ratio? Yeah. Normally, lethicin should be greater than the sphingomyelin. The ratio should be two or more. But what if I do not have any surfactant? Whoa, if you have no surfactant, you have no lethicin, this ratio can drop to one or even less than one. And that's another flip, which means you could be suffering from a respiratory distress syndrome. In the good old days, which were not so good, there was something called x-ray myelogram. Suppose that you have a patient with a problem in the spinal cord, vertebral canal, spinal canal, etc. How do you diagnose it? You used to inject a dye intrathecally into the patient's spinal cord surroundings and then take a picture using x-ray and then bring all the doctors, all the nurses and even call for the freaking dentist to flip the patient upside down and take another picture. Compare picture number one with picture number two to see if there is any obstruction, leak, etc. And that's why the person who invented the MRI is going straight to heaven. Doctors do not need to flip you anymore. But what the flip does this have to do with the LDH? Let me tell you. Imagine that you have a patient with pulmonary infarction and chest pain. The patient asked, doctor, do you think I have a heart attack? You looked at LDH2 and it was greater than LDH1. Okay, normal. LDH1 to LDH ratio was less than one. Fine, that's normal. Hey patient, do not worry about it. You do not have a heart attack. Shut up, you freaking doofus. What did I say? The patient has pulmonary infarction. The lung has what? LDH2 and LDH3. So LDH2 will be high. Even if the patient has myocardial infarction, LDH1 will be high 
still I can have LDH2 greater than LDH1 with a myocardial infarction. And that's why do not just look at the relative terms, look at the absolute terms as well. What should be the normal LDH1? Well, it should be around 50 international units per liter. Okay, how about this patient's LDH1? Well, it's uh, 150. You freaking doofus. But hey, medicosis, do not judge me. It did not flip. Well, the patient's family are gonna flip your butt in front of the judge and you will end up behind bars. Do not forget to send me your mug shots, anteroposterior and lateral, please. Other causes of elevated LDH1. Well, hemolysis, red blood cells have LDH1. If you remember, extravascular hemolysis, here is the splenic macrophage destroying my red blood cell, and what's happening here? LDH is elevated, specifically LDH1. So how do I know there is hemolysis? Three labs, LDH1, elevated. How about unconjugated bilirubin, also elevated but haptoglobin decreased. Intravascular hemolysis, your red blood cell is destroyed inside the vessel. When the red blood cell is destroyed, it releases what? LDH1. LDH1 is high, unconjugate bilirubin, high, haptoglobin, low. Is LDH elevation synonymous with MI? Well, it suggests MI, it's sensitive and it's specific. But the question is, which LDH are you talking about? Well, if it's LDH1, yes. However, hemolysis can also elevate your LDH1, so it could be hemolysis and not MI. Be careful because strenuous exercise can increase your LDH1, 2, and 5. Some drugs can elevate your LDH1, or any LDH for that matter. Here are some examples. Vitamin C can lower your LDH1. So here is a patient with myocardial infarction coming to you. Hey doctor, do you think I have a heart attack? Well, let me look at your LDH1. Well, your LDH1 is fine. You do not have a heart attack. Shut up. Maybe the patient took too much vitamin C, which decreases LDH1, giving you a falsely low level of LDH1. Why don't you just take a good history from the patient instead of trying to be house MD? Let me digress for a second and tell you about another story of vitamin C ruining your lab test. Imagine a patient coming in and you suspected hematuria. Okay, I think there is blood in the urine. Let me order some urine dipstick. The urine dipstick is negative because the patient was taking vitamin C. So vitamin C can give you a falsely negative test for hematuria when you do the urine dipstick. So what should I do? Send the urine to the lab. Do not do it on the bedside just by the urine dipstick. And you can order urine microscopy as well. If you see red blood cells under the microscope, there is red blood cells in the urine. What is the normal LDH serum level? Well, it depends on your age, but for adults, it's between 100 and 190. This is the total LDH. Out of this total, we have the isomers. LDH1 is about uh, 26%. So about one quarter of this. So if you say it's 100, this is normally 25 international units per liter. If you want to learn more about how do we treat myocardial infarction, arrhythmia, heart failure, hypertension, etc., check out my cardiac pharmacology course on my website, medicosisperfectionalis.com. Tumors can raise your LDH. Learn more about anti-cancer pharmacology by downloading my course on my website. You can also get the pinnacle of all courses, my antibiotics course. Talking about antibacterials, antifungals, antivirals, and antiparasitic medications, medicosisperfectionalis.com. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.